The Radio Waymo Breakfast. Wine Vault Radio with Jason Bryant from WineVaultTV.com. Yeah, why not? Why not have a bit of Wine Vault Radio? Why not have some wine tastings in the Kiwi studio? That's the question we asked of Jason Bryant, and he said yes. So here he is. G'day, Jason. Good morning, Waymo. Very good to see you once again today. A great topic, great topic of conversation. I'm looking forward to this. Um, the best wine themed kind of movies or anything that's vaguely got to do with wine and movies and the best bottle of wine to sit down in front of a movie with jason what do you think i think there are two really strong contenders one has to be the first one on probably everybody's lips right now would be um sideways let's hear a bit of sideways hang on here we go hold the glass up and examine the wine against the light you're looking for color and clarity now stick your nose in it there's some strawberry Mm. Oh, there's just a flutter of like a like a nutty Edam cheese. When are we drinking now? <laughs> mm. uh, that's a great scene. Yeah, <laughs> that's a great it? movie. <laughs> <laughs> just a <but> nutty cheese. <laughs> <laughs> What's he on about? <laughs> Sometimes you do get that kind of uh, that <laughs> sense and and smell and aroma from wine yeah. um, that um, reminds you of cheese and and nuts and. Um, <laughs> Generally, kind of uh, either hazelnuts or almonds and stuff yeah. like that. But um, the the cheese, uh, you have to look a bit deeper into your glass of wine or smell it a bit deeper into your glass of wine to kind of really pull that one out. But um, Side- sideways really has come to symbolise the ultimate wine lovers movie, hasn't it? Yeah, that that as a, a kind of for me that that is a as a nice story. Kind of, it's a couple of guys going off, kind of on the on the stag weekend. Um, to have this ultimate kind of last bonding moment before he gets married. Yeah. Uh, the other film would be Mondovino, which is um, a bit more serious. It's about the wine industry and um, the likes of Robert Parker. And um, it's really good. It's, I've seen that. That's about the the old world versus the new world. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. And yeah. about really the the corruption of the new world to try to break down the old world and kind of really really mess up the wine industry. Um, Jonathan Nossiter, um directed and I think produced and starred in the movie, um, or the doco, yeah. um, did an absolutely fantastic job. It's like a, th- a three-hour epic as well, but it's, I, I just didn't want it to finish. No, nor did I, and I sat in the chair, and it's the first <laughs> time... I can't sit in my, in my movie chair for kind of more than 20 minutes before getting bored. I sat yeah. there riveted. And I know it's about the subject that I really kind of feel passionate about, mm. and so it's a bit more compelling for me, but... You could apply almost apply that to any industry right now. Um, that kind of yeah, that documentary style. Um, if so, so Mondovino. So if anyone is thinking about hiring something this weekend, uh, if they're looking at the weather forecast is not so good in your area and you want to yeah, exactly. inside Mondovino, and obviously Sideways as well. You've got to see Sideways. Sideways is damn funny. Yeah, and, and you've got a personal hook up with with Sideways. The, a connection there. Uh, yeah, there is a connection. Virginia Madsen, the the lead actress in Sideways, and her and I speak um, electronically, but we are going to do Wine Vault TV together this year. Yeah, um, she's uh, she's fantastic. We've sent her some wine and um, cool. Yeah, she's really engaging, and she shows you like through Twitter and tweet reel and stuff behind the movie scenes um, in LA and what she's doing and kind of what she's eating. She's really engaging. She's she's a, I'm not sure whether she follows that many people. She just started following me one day, and I'm not sure whether it's a wine connection or what, but. Yeah. Um, uh, ever since then, we've had uh, a lot of good fun. That's great. So, yeah. um, and, that, and that's the that's just the, the breaks down all the social barriers, isn't exactly. it? Just once again, social media. It's great. Yeah. Mm. So I thought I'd bring in a pin and a wire because of the there's a lot of um, Mondovino and also obviously um, Sideways. They're chasing the Holy Grail, and the Holy Grail is pin and a wire in yeah. this guy's eyes. Ironically, at the end, which most people kind of miss, he gets his ultimate bottle of wine at the end of um, Sideways. And yeah. they're sharing this out of a polystyrene cup or something like that. And the wine that they're actually drinking, I think it's a 1947 uh, Chateau Cheval Blanc, which is a Merlot predominant wine. Yeah. And that's the irony twist at the end, but it really killed Merlot sales globally it, it by 40%. That's incredible, isn't it? Power of media. Yeah. So I thought that in honour of that, I'd get a Pinot Noir. But that was very unfair, though, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, seeing as he says at the, the the end of the film, this is my ultimate bottle and it is a Merlot. And you go, okay. <laughs> but the irony was lost on so many people. That his chase and description of Pinot Noir being the kind of noble grape and um, 
it was it was just fantastic. The yeah. the dialogue in that film was was great. Hold, hold it hold it up to the um, to the camera. What have, what have we got? We've got a Kum, 2008 Kumu River Village Pinot Noir made by Michael Brakovich, um, Kumu just outside of Auckland. Um, Auckland's not really known for Pinot Noir, mm. and so my my concept with this one was kind of like they were travelling out of Napa Valley and um, out of Los Angeles to Napa Valley, and we don't have to go too far before we get to the vineyards. Yeah. Just outside Auckland. That's true. And so I thought, rather than the central fruity kind of um, wines, and then you've got the Martinborough, which are very earthy, mushroom-driven wines, I thought we'd give um, this so, a little crack. So if you're in Auckland, you can think of Kumu and through there as your own Napa Valley. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We just I take can, it for granted. It. <laughs> we do. We yeah, take it for granted. We do, actually. It's, you're right. Uh, we take everything for granted that's on our kind of doorstep, like the beaches and, yep. and the vineyards. They produce some pretty good wine out at, at West. Just like in Christchurch, uh, Waipata Valley yeah. would probably be your, your Napa. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Mm. And if you're in Queenstown, obviously you've got Central Otago, you go yeah. through Gibston Valley and what, different world. What if you're in Wellington? Are you, are you out of luck? Martin Martin, <laughs> Martin Bro, yeah, okay. you have to go over yeah. the Rabatakas and it's stuff like that all through. Away. It's a little way away, but uh, you've got the journey to get there and kind of like you're rewarded at the end. So yeah. it's your own little kind of uh, little vacation that you can go through. And, 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 if, and, and if you're in Nelson, you're just in paradise. That's, that's and <laughs> if you're in Blenheim, obviously yeah. you've got a whole of Marlborough there. Um, yeah. Hawke's Bay, Napier, um, Gisborne. Yeah. Um, Hamilton. Blank. <laughs> Yeah, yes. uh, you've got a. You've probably got a dairy farm. I think yes. that's what you've got. <laughs> <laughs> you've got a bunch of cr- bunch of uh, crud. In you've got river. an airport to get out. <laughs> yeah, I think it's sorry, Hamilton. Hamilton. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, give this a crack because we don't usually associate. I mean, you see the colour. It's nice, light, yep. ruby, ruby red, and um, gorgeous, gorgeous colour. Very, oh, very, clear. That's very clear. Very yeah. clear. It's um, very clear. Yeah, very it's light and clear. This, I've got to say, it's got a pretty good nose. It's actually, it's not aromatically challenged. I get a kind of a mushroom character off the top of this. This is more reminding me of Martinborough. Okay. Right off the nose. And we do normally associate um, New Zealand Pinots with, with Otago as well. Yeah, we? yeah, yeah. So I just wanted to get away from that and um, talk about Pinot Noir. It's the most difficult grape to cultivate because it's such a thin skin. Mm. And because of the, all the colour comes from the skin, that's why you get a light wine. Yeah. Light coloured wine. Yeah. Should be the palate, weight, and texture that um, really give you the sense of nobility from this grape. Oh, nobility! Love that word. Yeah, there we are. Uh, uh, how about its regalness? <laughs> 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 it's a regal wine when it's in the bottle. Yeah, once you pour it out, it becomes noble. <laughs> noble. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hmm. Hmm. For now, this price point is twenty-two bucks, so it sits below quite a few um, Central Targa and Martin Brewer wines. It's very dry. You do get a real kind of drying kind of aspect right at the end. Mm. You do get a lot of kind of primary fruit, but you, then you get quite a lot of savoury kind of characters. Almost a bit of bacon fat there. Oh, I like it. It's, it's a good good breakfast wine. Good breakfast <laughs> wine, yeah. <laughs> oh. mm. So hopefully. Um, there's a guy in Wellington, Hugh McCracken, who listens, so hopefully um, he'll be able to get out to... I know he takes the train, he's a real train advocate, so he'll be able to take the train out to Martinborough and taste all these lovely wines of Martinborough. Yeah, you know, you know, I, I like I like this because... Um, and I do like a very light Pinot as well, but I, I yeah. kind of like this, and I like the thought of sitting down in front of a movie with this. Yeah. Because it's a little bit of something to chew over as well. There's a, there's a, little, bit, there's a little bit of guts to this. And I get a kind of saltiness at the back now. Hmm. It's certainly not sweet. No, no, no. You don't get that kind of really no. ripe Central Otago sweetness. You get some good fruit mixed with a bit of savoury, a bit of bacon fat, like your 3.30 a.m. in the morning cooking <laughs> up your bacon sandwich or something like that. Yeah. You get that kind of character right at the back. And then you get a bit of salty saline kind of character at the back as well. What do they say? Don't, don't drink and yeah, fry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not advocating that at all. <laughs> <laughs> don't drink and do every, everything. Just sit and watch a movie. <laughs> Make it Mondovino or yeah. uh, sideways, perhaps. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, that's the one, uh, and I'd probably score that for me because it's quite different. 
I'm going to go kind of 87 points on that. 87? 87. Okay. Which is pretty good. Very nice. All right. That has been another episode of uh, Wine Vault Radio. We're looking at the Kumu River Village, a 2008 Pinot Noir, and we're also looking at Mondovino and Sideways, a couple of um, uh, wine-themed films to watch, and uh, we might we'll go out on a little bit here. Thanks, Jason. Pleasure, wine, pleasure. Wine Vault, wine Vault TV.com. Go check it out. Quick. You guys should stay for the weekend. No, we have to get back for the rehearsal dinner. What rehearsal dinner? Just now I could have told you some story, but I didn't. I told you the truth. I spent three years trying to extricate myself from a relationship that was full of deception. I am not Jack.